Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham show. I am here today with another special guest, Donna Serdula, and we are going to talk all things LinkedIn, but what we're going to focus on is a little bit different than other episodes we've had before, which I will, of course, link in the show notes for you. So you can go back and learn even more about LinkedIn and really start using it to grow your business and showcase yourself as an authority and an expert in your, in your niche. Um, but for today, we're going to talk about how you can actually align with your values on LinkedIn, how you can get loud on LinkedIn and really showcase who you are, what you do and how you serve your clients so that you can attract more of those soulmate clients. Without further ado, Donna Serdula, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Hey, Robin. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. I am really happy that you're here. We are just got reacquainted. We've actually officially met you guys like four, a little over four years ago. So it's really cool to see how things come full circle. And here we are having a similar conversation again today. But before we dive in, will you tell the listeners a little bit about you, how you got to this point in your journey? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've been doing this since 2009. It seems like such a long time. Um, but back in the day, I just, I saw so much potential with LinkedIn. I, you know, I think coming from a, a sales background, uh, even a CRM background, I, I, I immediately saw the potential of having a, a, a profile and building your network. These are really, really in, important things in one's career as well as in, you know, for businesses. Um, what I remember the most was really struggling. I, I knew that the profile was important and people were checking me out just like I was checking other people out. But, you know, I wanted to say something on the profile that would engage and, and get people interested. And it was so hard. I remember it was like hard to write about myself. It didn't matter if I was a good writer or not. I just, when it came to me, like I couldn't find the words. I didn't even know what to even write about. And so for me, that was that was the, the big point. It was like, if I'm having this issue, other people are struggling. Uh -huh. And yes, we can ignore it. But if we ignore it, you know, we're not going to get the benefit. We're not going to get all these positives and these wonderful things that can happen. So that's what I had done. I said, let's, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put out that shingle and I'm going to help people embrace LinkedIn and, and really help them tell that story and really get to the, you know, understand who they are, what they're doing, why it matters so they can collide with opportunities and have massive success. Mm, I love that collide with opportunities and have massive success. So tell me this, Donna, when people are approaching LinkedIn and they are struggling with their telling their story or writing something engaging that will attract their clients. Like how should one approach that? Yeah. It, the first thing you do, Robin, is you stop, just stop writing because that's the issue, right? We don't even know what we're saying. So you've got to sort of take, you got to sort of take three steps back and take a breath and then answer some questions. So the first question is, why are you on LinkedIn? Like, what are you really hoping to accomplish? Are you doing this because you want to attract clients? Are you doing this because you want to be seen in a very specific certain way? You know, are you doing this because, hey, maybe you are looking for a new position, a new job. Maybe you're looking for investors or partners. Like, there's there's different reasons. It's not always, I want a job or I want new clients. There's a whole bunch of other reasons. So get really, really clear why you're on LinkedIn. Then you need to think about your target audience. What do they need to know about you? What do they want to know about you? What do you want them to know about you? You know, and, and what's important? What are their pain points? What, what, what does success mean to them? Like you need to start to think of those, those questions and what the answers are. Then you want to take another step. And that next step is, if if they were looking for you, if your ideal clients were actually looking for you, but they didn't know you existed, what keywords would they be typing in trying to find you? Right? That's 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 important because once we know those keywords, then we can start to use that in our narrative, in our context, right? And so once you do that exercise 
And, and you ask yourself those deep questions. Now the narrative is going to start to write itself a little bit, right? Because now you have a better vision of what you're presenting. And you're also looking at yourself a little bit more objectively. You're no longer saying, hey, it's just about me. Now it's about your target audience. Now it's about the, their problems and their pain and, and the, their success and you know their business outcome. So it makes it a little easier. Oh, I love this so much because as you're talking about this and getting to know, you know, making sure you know your soulmate client, ideal client, and then also the the pain points they have so that you can use those keywords or key phrases. I, I don't know if you know this, Donna, but I'm huge in SEO. So that is like so, so important. But to be able to have those words so that when somebody's typing in something, they're seeking something, we come up as the solution. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And and I always say, like, you have to feel bad for people who are searching on LinkedIn, right? Because they they they're searching with this hope and this dream that they're they're going to find their solution. And then they start to scroll through the search results. And the search results, it's a person who's kind of blurry, <laughs> you know, like the picture's not that great. You know, the headline is maybe just their current title and the company that they work for. Like there's not this. It rarely is there that, oh my gosh, this is the person that I want to be. Like, this is who I want to talk to. This is someone who's speaking my language. This person looks like the, my savior, right? Yeah. Like that's yeah. not usually the case. Like they're sort of pouring through these dull, dry, boring search results. Yeah. So if you can make yours pop, your phone's going to ring. Yeah. You said something there that I think is absolutely critical. And that is the photo. I, I know I've read stats where, you know, if you are someone and, and most of our audience is, is entrepreneurs or, or small business owners, but it applies because people will scroll right past if you don't have a good photo. And I see it all the time. And I get so many of these ridiculous sales DMs, right? These people don't have any idea who I am, but here they are to sell to me right away, immediately straight out of the gate. And I look at their picture and I'm like, why would I hire you? Like, you yeah. don't look professional. If I'm going to hire someone, I want professionalism because I'm a professional business. I want to be represented professionally. So it automatically, I think, reduces the trust factor. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, like, is this the world that we want to live in? where we're judging people based upon the way they look, that all of that value is being placed on, on a person's face. Like it's horrible, but it's true. And we all yeah. do it. I, yeah. I, I wish it was different. I totally wish it was different. But at the same time, I see it all the time in yeah. our minds. We know what an entrepreneur looks like. We know what an executive looks like. I am not talking about your hairstyle or the color of your skin. I'm talking about the clarity of the image. I'm talking about how that face looks confident. I'm talking about the way that the, the clothes fit and, 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 and it's, it's a quality. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if that, that alone, and if, and that's why I, I love, I love working with, um, the headshot crew photographers because they do executive presence coaching when they mm -hmm. take your photo. Yeah. It's not about like just smile. It's, are you exuding confidence? Mm -hmm. There was a study done in, uh, it was a researcher in Princeton and he wrote a book. I was just turning to look at my bookcase to find it because when I was in photography, that's one of the, that's all I did was headshots, but it was real. it was literally bringing the soul out of the eyes and the smile. And and confidence was key, but he, he studied this and how people will, will determine whether or not you're trustworthy in like less than a second. It is so fast. And that's why that headshot is so important mm -hmm. because if you, and it's not about whether you're pretty, you're old, you're young, you have long hair, short hair, blue eyes, brown eyes, that doesn't matter. What matters is that you look professional and confident. And I think that's the emphasis is the eyes are the gateway to your soul. Like plain and simple. That is how people are going to recognize whether they can connect with you. Yeah. So, okay. I, enough about that. <laughs> I, I could talk about that stuff all day long. 
But I think something else you said about, you know, having those keywords and how it's kind of bad, like you feel sorry for someone who's searching for something on LinkedIn, but even if they're searching on Google, the LinkedIn profile will come up. And that's why I like to think of LinkedIn, not as social media, but more of an opportunity to grow our network, but also for search and jump search engine optimization, because you don't have to have a hashtag in order to be found. Those keywords are key and key phrases are actually um, discovered by other search engines. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I remember back in the day when I was in sales, back when I was an employee and I would, you know, as I was cold calling, I would look, you know, I, oh, I'm, I have to talk to this person. Let me put their name into the search engine. Let me put, let me Google their name and let me see what pops up time and time again. I mean, invariably, the very first result, the only result was their LinkedIn profile. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and 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 the funny part is, even today, when I'm when I do Google a person and it's their LinkedIn profile and then it's their website, I like to go to the profile first. You know, I find that that's going to give me a little bit more almost candid information mm -hmm. because not only am I now looking at their profile, but I'm looking at their entire career trajectory. I'm looking at where they went to school. I'm able to see their network. I'm able to see their interests. I'm also able to see how relevant they are because I can see what they're posting and what they're mm -hmm. commenting on. It's a much deeper, a deeper flavor of that person than I would if I just went to their website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. So let's talk about that profile then. So we know we need that catchy information in the mm -hmm. bio right at the top yeah. where so the picture, the bio, or whatever you call that little area. And then what else is important to have on that profile? You know, when we look at the top, right, the top feeds into the search engine results. Mm -hmm. So that's important. There is your picture, there's your name, and there's then there's your headline. Those are the areas that are almost always there within the search results. So we want to make sure those those pop. Absolutely. The headline is so important. And you have to strike a balance, Robin, because you don't, you're going to hear a lot of people say, you want to be salesy, you want to tell, you know, want to make a promise. But if you're too salesy, you're going to come across as like one of those people who are doing those pitch slaps, right? And, and you don't want to do that. So you've got to find a way of weighing your benefit statement with your keywords, but also with your credibility marker, right? Your, mm -hmm. your title, your company. So that in itself is something that you should spend time really looking at and thinking about um, because you don't want to come across as so salesy that you don't care, that you're just mm -hmm. looking for a sale. That, and people would, won't connect with you because they see that. Mm -hmm. So that's a big part. The other thing is once they land on your profile, because they, you know, they like your smile, they like the headline, this person looks real, let's, let's check them out. Now they're at the top of the profile and there's the background image, you know? So if you're looking at your profile, if it's gray and stripy, that means you've got the default background image. You want to upload something, but that's the other piece, you know, with Robin, you, you want to make sure that the, the background image reflects your brand, you know? And, and so, yeah, you might like flowers or you might like the beach, but it's not necessarily something you want to lead with. With, with that said, you know, it might not be a bad way of getting people to start a conversation. I had a client who, um, he was a big wig in, in advertising in New York and he had uploaded a picture of himself because he was a, he was a cyclist. He loved you know doing the long haul you know cycling, and he uploaded a picture of himself on that on the background image. And he found that that was far more successful than when he put his company logo up there because there were a lot of people who liked to cycle, and it gave them a re reason to talk to him and like him and trust him. So sometimes going a little bit off is a good idea too. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it shows the personal side, right? Because whether you're in corporate or you own a business, you have a personal brand and yeah. that's the perception that other people are going to have of you. So I think when you show something a little bit on the per professional or personal side, you open the door for a perception of, oh, okay. So this guy is interesting. Like he has a, a hobby. He cares about his body and being physically fit, but he also is driven because- mm -hmm 
you know, long haul cyclists are definitely not <laughs> for the, that's not for the pain of heart. Right. Oh, um, so, you know, I, I love that. I think that's really important to show a little bit of the personal side. Yeah. And I mean, right now we're at this, like we're at a watershed moment with AI, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I think we're going to find that it's becoming more and more important to showcase our humanity, to show, you know, the, the more person and personalized aspects of who we are mm -hmm. because, you know, yeah, I could, I could use AI to generate something, but you know what, maybe I really do want to consult with someone who has spent years and understands the nuances and can really give me something that's, you know, more successful and more poignant than what AI is going to generate. So, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then if you can really build into that and say, you know, who this is who I am. And these are, these are the things that I care about. And, and there's that intersection. I think that's, what's going to draw people to say, yeah, I want to work with a human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think AI is sometimes a starting point, but it's not the end all be all. Like we really have to customize it and personalize it to ourselves. So that was a great point that you brought in there. Okay. So now we kind of have the top, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can actually link. So if you are a business owner, you can actually link to where you want people to go find more about you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we now have the ability to add, uh, if you have a services page, and that's something that's really, really new, Robin, where before the services page was something that you had to click to go to from the top of the profile to now it's getting embedded into the profile itself. So if you have a services page and you're showcasing your services, now not only do you get the link at the top of your profile, but you get you get this beautiful listing of your services. And if you are a premium member, you can have a carousel of images. Uh, you can have a request proposal button. It really, it really has revved up LinkedIn in terms of business. Yeah. Well, okay. So this was totally worth having you on because I didn't know there was this new service page. So now I have to go and update my profile. <laughs> yeah. So what you're going to want to do is when you get to your profile, go to add, add profile section, add to profile, mm -hmm. and then look for services. And that's where you'll be able to go in. And there is a list, like a huge laundry list of services. The problem is not every single service is listed. So hopefully you will find your service in there. If it's not in there, you can't really do other, unfortunately. Um, so you choose. Oh, that's what true. A lot of business, like a lot of platforms only have like marketing or something like that. They Or life coaching, they don't have specific like business growth strategy or business coaching, you know, it's, so yeah. you're, you're kind of stuck sometimes with what, maybe I have seen that now that you're saying that, I think I might yeah. have seen that. But I have to go check things, that out. <laughs> yeah, check it out because, but that here's the thing. If you had checked it out like a year ago and That's what it. your, you know, your service wasn't there, keep checking back because they're constantly adding new ones. And, and to be honest, I'm often surprised at the services they do have listed. I was in there not too long ago and they had bartender and floral, uh, what was it? Floral design. Like, wow. I didn't really associate that with LinkedIn, you know, maybe Facebook, right. But, but LinkedIn, that seemed a little odd to me, but they have it. So you never, don't, don't dismiss it. Definitely do search and check. Yeah. Okay. So then we have the about section and I know this is not a resume. Like this is mm -hmm. not writing your resume or just copying and pasting your resume onto LinkedIn. So the about section is really about telling a story, right? Or if you are a business owner or entrepreneur, maybe even doing sort of a case study and sharing social proof or tell us what you recommend in the about section. I will say this. There is no you know, one way or the highway. <laughs> I, I I recently saw someone stating, well, the about section has to be written in first person narrative voice. And I will say for the longest of time, that was something that I would always say, oh, you know, it's best to write it in first person because a lot of times people were taking an old bio and repurposing it. And that was written in third person. So, you know, like, yeah. don't do that. But, you know, there are times when you can write, yeah, definitely write it in first person. That's that's great, but you can also write it in second person, where you're 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 speaking directly to the person and you're using the word you. So mm -hmm. it's the the difference being I love coffee versus you love coffee. 
the third person would be, she loves coffee, right? So, you know, you could do it, in, you know, speaking directly. Do you have these issues? Are you looking to improve your life? And then you can switch to first person. Well, I, I can help you do these things. So mm -hmm. it's not like it's one way or the highway there. And, and it really always goes back to, you know, what is your goal and who is your target audience? I've worked, I've worked with some very high level executives who've said to me, I really don't want to spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. I, you know, I'm not there to, I'm just there because I need to be, <laughs> I'm not there because I want to interact. Heck, a third person narrative isn't a bad way to go in that situation. We want that distance between uh -huh. you and the reader. So, but let's say, right, you know who your target audience is, you know, you know, their pain points. You also know who you are and, and what you want them to know about you. Well, think of this as a digital introduction, you know, really think about, you know, what are those credibility builders? Because that about section is truncated. It's collapsed. That first like three lines should be intriguing. It should be interesting. It should get a person to go, oh, I got to click that see more, right? And then when they click the see more, you, you do want it to keep building where a person's like, oh my goodness, this is someone that I like. They're funny. They've done some really awesome things. But but even more so, I, I get the sense that they understand who I am and you know, the help that I need, you know, and, and so you do want to get very, very clear again, why are you on it? Who is your target audience? And, you know, what do they need for success? What are those business outcomes that they are expecting? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And then there's, I mean, there are so many things on the profile too, like your feature section, the recommendations and all mm -hmm. of those. Do you have other like strong tips that people should be aware of with the other sections? Yeah. You know, one of the things that I see, this is a, these are issues that I see often, which is a person will update their profile five years ago, 10 years ago, three years ago. It doesn't matter, but they, they update their profile. They put all this effort into it and, and they are perfectly aligned for where they are at that moment in time. And then as, as is the case with, with us humans, day after day, nothing really seems to change, right? Life just keeps going on until all of a sudden you look back and you realize that everything has changed. <laughs> everything is different, but that profile has remained stagnant. And so typically what then happens is a person will go, oh, all right, let me update it. You know, I've, I've, I've had a job change. I have a new business, but everything else that they had written in the past stayed the same. They didn't go back. They didn't cull. They didn't weed. And, and so what happens is that the profile starts to look almost like a, like a, a pyramid. And the most current stuff has the least amount of information, but the older stuff has a ton of information. And with the algorithm, the algorithm is looking for keywords and content, and all of that content is in the past. And so they start, they start colliding with opportunities that are no longer, they're no longer really, they're like, it's not qualified for them, right? It's, it's old, it's, it's lower level. And they think, oh gosh, LinkedIn is useless. But truth of the matter is you've got to flip it. So the most current stuff has the most content. And as you go backwards in time into positions that, and, and businesses that you don't ever want to do again, has the least amount of information. That's interesting. So do you delete old content off? We, I don't want to change the trajectory, but there's no need for us to go into all of this information about customer service if you never want to do customer service again. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, so we want to keep the framework, but we don't need to have as much information as we did mm -hmm. back in the day because that was all that we had. But now there's so much more above it. And it's, it's what have you done for me lately? That's what's most important. And you're talking about now, like on the profile section where it's talking about the experiences. Okay. Not necessarily going through and deleting old posts, but focusing on the experiences. It's the experiences. Okay. And, 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 you know, with the posts, it, you know, it's, it's a little bit more, you know, those things age away, those things mm -hmm. age away. Now okay. with that said, maybe you posted once five years ago. 
maybe you don't want to delete it, but maybe we want to put some new stuff on top of that. Right, exactly. Yeah, and that could be even sharing someone else's post that is in your area of expertise or, you know, and then commenting that, oh, this resonated with me because. So then you're giving your perspective and showing your authority in that area as well, not to supersede the person's post, but to, you know, acknowledge that, oh, I respect this and here's why. And yeah. So, you know, okay. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I I was going to say, you know, the, the profile is such a foundational piece of LinkedIn and it's, it's the piece where you can you can truly lose control very easily, right? Because it's not something that you you have to, they're not reminding you constantly to go back and, and update it. And and again, like life changes slowly. So it's yeah. easy to, to suddenly look back and go, oh my gosh, that, that's from, you know, that's from a different brand ago. It's from a different yeah. life ago. So it's one of those things that it is foundational and you do want to keep going back to it, you know, because one, when we talk about SEO and we talk about, you know, the search algorithm, no one knows the real, you know, algorithm for the, po- you know, what's going to be a successful post and what's going to get your profile to the top. Like no one truly knows that's, that's hidden. But what we can do is we can say what makes sense. And so what we think of LinkedIn and we think of, you know, the search engine, the search engine piece of it you know, does LinkedIn want to show a profile in the search results towards the top that that hasn't been touched in three months or eight months or two right. years? No, right. we know that. You know, if I was a search engine, I would want to show the profiles that have been most recently updated because that's the most fresh, it's the most current, and the person's the most active and clearly takes it seriously. Yeah, Absolutely. So, okay, let's just, we have about mm, three-ish minutes left. So let's, I know it goes by so fast. <laughs> what, how did that happen? <laughs> I know, right? So we talked before we started recording about getting loud on LinkedIn. And I mentioned that in the intro. So what is your perspective on that? Like, how do we get loud? How do we get found? How do we get seen? And we talked about the SEO, but what do we do after that? You know, with with getting loud on LinkedIn, so there's there is the the profile piece. You know, like having a strong profile, having it reflect your brand, having it articulate, you know, who you are and what you do and your dreams and your your future. Like, there we have it. But then it's the everyday going on LinkedIn, scrolling through the feed, you know, interacting with people, posting, joining the conversation through the comments, but then starting your own conversation. You know, that's the posting, and that's something that. You know, I think for a lot of people, you have to you have to make that commitment. You have to say, you know what, my brand is important, my thought leadership is important, and and I really do. I want to engage on this platform. What you want to do first, so before I said you have to have you'd have to know your your goal and your your target audience. Well, in this situation, what you want to do is you want to just again stop. And don't don't try to immediately get loud. Again, don't just write. But first, start to scroll through the the feed. You know, do it on your phone, do it on your desktop, whatever you, you know, whichever is your more familiar and comfortable device. But spend spend a week just scrolling. I find that so many people want to get loud, but they're not engaging and they're not reading anything first. Mm-hmm. So you've got to scroll through and sort of learn the dialect, learn and see what people are posting and what what's doing well and what's not doing well and what what engages you. So do that for a week. Just just scroll, scroll for 15 minutes every morning, scroll and see what's going on. Then the second week, what you want to do is the second week you want to say, all right, you know, I'm, I'm going to continue to scroll, but now I'm going to engage I'm going to like, I'm going to comment. I'm going to, I'm going to start to join these conversations and, and really see, you know, like what does engage you? What makes it easy for you to, to converse and, and, you know, interact with these posts. Once you do that, so you've, you've scrolled for a week, you've commented for a week. Now, now you're at that point where you have to say to yourself, all right, I, I've experienced it. I've sort of done a like what a gestalt, (laughs) um, you know, immersion into it. I know what I've enjoyed. I know what people like. Now it's time to post. And, and as much as I would love to tell everybody post every day, 
I post almost every day. I, that's my goal is to post every day. It's hard. It's hard to run a business. It's hard to come up with this, this, this information. And so even though it's a good thing to do, don't feel that you have to. Don't feel like you have to. If you can do it once a week, if you could do it twice a week, if you could do it once every two weeks, but just choose that cadence and stick to it. Mm-hmm. And 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 just do it with a that free the frequency isn't that you're doing it often, it's that you're just doing it consistently. Yeah. Yeah. I used to say that a lot too. When you're trying to build your personal brand, consistency is key when you're with anything. And yeah. the important thing is deciding what works for you, not trying to do what everybody else is doing or everybody else says you're doing. Consistency means you're posting at a regular pace that works for you. So I love that you said that. And, um, oh, shucks, there was something else I was going to ask you and now I forgot. Oh, I'm going to, well, we're going to go here. So is there a difference Because, oh, I know what I was going to say. And this is really important, actually. I was going to say that when it comes to creating content, if you're struggling for content ideas, if you have a blog, that should be your evergreen, your core content, that content that is always there on a platform you own. Go back to those blogs and then use that content and create posts out of those because you can always say you can read more at the blog. So then for an, from an SEO perspective, you're driving traffic back, back to that. So if you're struggling with how to write a blog, how to write a blog for SEO or how to use a blog as your core cornerstone or evergreen content, I will link in the show notes, the blog course that we have that will give you everything you need to know to start or to, to grow a blog and just start using that as your content so that you're not having to feel stressed and pressured about coming up with content ideas. So my last question for you about content is, is there a difference? I see a lot people will post what's on Instagram or Facebook and then repost it to LinkedIn. Is that okay to do? Or is there a difference in how you approach the content on LinkedIn in terms of the phraseology, the, you know, the words you use, the, the, the pace of the post, those kind of things. There is a, I think there's a huge difference between Instagram and LinkedIn. And so, you know, here's the thing. You have to know the platform. You have to know your target audience, you know, who's which one's on which. And, and like, if you have the same network on both, do you think they're happy seeing the exact same stuff from you twice? Not really. You know, so so maybe it's really looking and saying, okay, on the LinkedIn platform, this is where I'm going to concentrate. And and even though LinkedIn, you know, it, it's text-based, it does like imagery, but it, it really likes imagery of you looking natural, you know, that selfie, that human. And so, you know, you can look at what you've done on Instagram and then then change it around, you know, and 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 make it work for that platform. You know, one of the things that works really well on LinkedIn is uh, the document posts where it's a PDF and, you know, you click through it and you learn something and it's a little easier, um, more bite-sized. Um, it's more uh, graphic. And I think people like it because of how different it is from just a regular block of text. So Mm -hmm. that's something that you can look at and say, all right, I did this on, on Instagram. Maybe I can take three different posts and combine them into a document Mm -hmm. post. Mm, I love that. That's a great recommendation. And we're of the same thought. Like I knew that I don't, I think there's a a difference in how you even start, like your hook is different on LinkedIn versus so a social platform. So, okay, we have to wrap, but will you please tell the listeners where they can find you, connect with you. And I know you have a book as well. So be sure and plug that. Yeah, I do. I have a a For Dummies book, believe it or not. So it's an actual official For Dummies book. And you can find it on Amazon. It's LinkedIn Profile Optimization For Dummies. We also have a AI instant profile program. So if if it's something that you do want to do on your own and you want to, you know, just utilize AI, I created all the prompts and you can check it out on my, my website, linkedin-makeover.com. Just click over to services and you'll see it instant profile. But, you know, I think for some people, you do need to work with someone. And if you, if you do need help telling your story, articulating your vision, understanding what you bring to the table, understanding the, that values and, and, and really targeting that right message for your, your target audience, we have, you know, 
human led, human led services where we'll get you partnered with a writer and, and, you know, through interviewing and talking to you, we'll really understand, you know, what separates you and, and we'll be able to create something that's, that's very authentic and very genuine, engaging. And it brings, it brings good things, brings good things to your life. Yeah. That's awesome. It brings opportunity, right? brings opportunity. It, yeah. it brings changes, you know, it brings, you know, good, good things. And, and oftentimes, you know, we say opportunities, but, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's colliding with, with investors or partners or new vendors, or, or it could be a uh, reporters or journalists or speaking opportunities or, you know, board of directors, you know, like there's so many mm-hmm. different things that can come your way. And a lot of times we get fixated on, oh, I'm looking for a client or I'm looking for a job. Opportunity can take so many different, yeah. um, you know, views. Sometimes it's even just meeting one person, growing your network by one person that is who you absolutely needed or wanted or just was meant to to meet. So yeah, so many, so many really good things. All right. Well, Donna, thank you so much for being here. This was such a pleasure. I appreciate you immensely. And listeners, if you would be so kind to share the episode with anyone you know that could use a LinkedIn makeover or who is just trying to do it themselves, but is confused, not quite sure what to put where, um, please share the episode with them. And if you'd be so kind to leave a rating and review, you know that warms my heart every single time. And it also helps me get great, incredible guests like Donna. So thank you so much for being here and we will see you all next time.